R. Kelly is out of jail once again after someone paid his outstanding child support bills, which totaled more than $160,000. But the singer is facing new allegations of sexual assault. A Pennsylvania couple says they found a tape in their home that appears to show R. Kelly abusing girls. Kelly is already facing 10 counts of aggravated sexual abuse in Chicago. He has pleaded not guilty. Criminal defense and litigation attorney Adel Alex Little joins us now. He's also a former prosecutor and a former U.S. attorney. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, so the man who found the tape, his name is Gary yeah. Dennis. He says the tape appears to show R. Kelly abusing young girls. Says he doesn't know how he got, how it. He got it. Could this create yeah. legal problems for R. Kelly separate from the charges he's already facing in Chicago? It could, but it seems really unlikely. I mean, the provenance of the tape is going to be litigated. He's not sure where it came from. He's not sure why he has it. You know, if you have to prove a couple of things when you put evidence like that. And the first is that the person on the tape is R. Kelly. And if they're going to dispute that already, most of the time you would have a, a circumstance that shows some reason to believe that this tape is of R. Kelly. It's, it's connected to someone who knows him. It's connected to one of the people depicted in the tape. Uh, without those things, it's going to be really, really hard to sort of connect this to him in a way that will cause legal difficulty. Now, I think what it shows is that right now there's a lot of attention on R. Kelly. Um, rightfully so, and, and I think he's going to be under a ton of scrutiny with this case in Chicago. Um, but will this tape lead to you know conviction there? I, I doubt it. Can you sort of take us through how law enforcement would investigate something like this? Like you said, you know, you take a look at the tape. You have to determine whether or not yeah. it's R. Kelly on the tape. Gloria, even Gloria Allred said she's not really 100 percent sure that it is R. Kelly. And then where do you go from there? Well, I think the first thing you do is try to figure out when the tape was made, where it was made, and who's in it. I mean, it, it's alleged to depict uh, child sexual abuse, sex with minors. And so the first thing investigators would try to track down is who are those people on the tape. If you can't identify them, you're going to have a real hard time establishing their age um, and be able to connect that to some sort of case you can prosecute. Now, if there is you know, some connection, it turns out that somebody's cousin or brother get, gave this to the man who has it, um, and they have a connection to R. Kelly, that's the first thing prosecutors are going to try to find out. So Gloria Allred said the tape was turned over to authorities in the Eastern District of New York, but she didn't really explain why that venue. Yeah. Does that indicate anything to you? Well, so potentially that could be where the tape was made. If there is some indication, somebody's mentioned that it happened in New York or in Brooklyn, or you know, that's one of the areas where the Eastern District would prosecute cases. Um, that could be why they've chosen that district. You know, if it does depict child sexual abuse, there are federal laws about trafficking or going across state lines uh, to have sex with minors. And so there could be a reason that Gloria thinks that, you know, that tape is re relevant to that district. You know, the thing about this case now with R. Kelly, so we've got, you know, four women who say that he has abused them, and, and three of them, I believe, were underage at the time they're claiming. But yeah. This whole thing with R. Kelly has become part of this national conversation, mm -hmm. right? I mean, to the point of being on Saturday Night Live, right. you know, over the weekend. That's how you know you're really sort of part of the of the conversation. Everyone's talking about it. That's got to be a challenge for prosecutors, for jurors as they move forward with this. Well, I think one of the things, you know, when there's a trial, the trial in Chicago specifically, the judge is going to try really hard to make sure the jurors who were selected for that trial haven't heard a lot of pretrial publicity. And so there's going to be an extensive uh, period of jury selection to try to weed out people who may have know, know about R. Kelly, hold some beliefs about this case based on what they've seen maybe on SNL or on you know some of the interviews. And so that's pretty standard in high profile cases. Now, the flip side of that is, as we saw in the Cosby case, that if there are a number of accusers and there is evidence outside of the case itself, you could, prosecutors can use that and they can say, you know, the defenses that R. Kelly is presenting here aren't credible because here are 10 other people who make the same exact accusation. And so it can be hard because we want the jury to be impartial, but it can also be important for the prosecutors to have that evidence of other cases in certain circumstances. Really interesting legal analysis. Alex Little, thank you so much. We appreciate it as always. Thank you.